We will discuss three things in this lesson. The first is types of errors in a program. There can be three types of errors in a program. Syntax error, runtime error and logical error. To explain that, let's write a simple program that will take two numbers from the user and will display the ratio of the two. The program is working fine. If I change this print from small p to capital P and run the code, line number 4 has now generated the error. This type of error is known as syntax error because we haven't followed the correct syntax to use print function. The syntax errors are easiest to find in a program because this is the error which will be caught by the interpreter by itself. Interpreter also gives the line number with wrong syntax. For example, here it mentions line number 4. Sometimes, the actual syntax error can be on previous line rather than the one indicated by the interpreter. So I'll suggest to see carefully the line indicated by the interpreter and one or two before that. Let's change that back to small p. Now if I remove l from this val function and now we will get error on line number 1. This is also a syntax error. I will correct that and now the code has no syntax error. It should work fine now. Let's keep the second number as 0. We got an error on line number 4, which is 0 to be an error because we cannot divide a number by 0. Now this is not a syntax error. There is no problem with the syntax of line number 4, but the error occurred because we attempted to divide a number by 0. If instead of 0, we enter any other number, we will get the correct output. This type of error is known as runtime error, which means there is no syntax issue in the program, but for some certain input values the program gives error. Syntax errors are easiest to find, but the runtime errors are difficult to figure out. Because for many cases the program will be giving the correct output, but for some certain cases it gives error. Then you need to deeply analyze the program for that certain case. Now let's make another change in the program and instead of this Dvn, I'll change that to multiplication. Now the program will not generate the error, but the final result that the ratio of entered number is 8 is not correct. We will not get an error even if we enter 0 as second number. But the result shown by the program is not a correct ratio. This type of error is known as logical error. The program logic is wrong. The logical errors are most difficult to figure out because we usually don't get any indication from the interpreter. Errors in program are also known as bugs and removing those is known as debugging. There are few ways and tools which help programmers to find the error in the program. We will explore those as we proceed in this course. The second thing we will discuss in this lesson is about comments in a program. A comment in a program is something which is not the part of program but is there to explain the logic to the programmer reading your code. Not the end user but the programmer reading the code. Like in different equation derivations, we usually write this is equation 1, this is equation 2 and then something like adding equation 1 and 2. So what is this adding equation 1 and 2? We are explaining the reader that we got the third equation by this logic. Likewise, in a computer program, we write some comments. Those comments are not read by the interpreter and are there for logic explanation to the readers of your program. And not just the other readers of your program, but for yourself too, it is important that you put some comments in your logic, which will help you understand the code at some later stage. When you will be writing complex and lengthy codes and will get back to that after few days, it might be even difficult for you to understand your own written code. So that's why you should write comments in your code. Enough said on this, now let's see how to write a comment. This is the code for finding the volume of the sphere from its input radius. In Python, 
a comment is indicated by a hash sign. So everything we write after the hash symbol on that line is ignored by the interpreter. So I can explain the logic of this statement as we are taking the input. You can see comment has not changed anything in the program. Comments should be meaningful. For example, for some physics calculations, if we are defining a gravitational constant as g equal to 9.8, then this comment like g is 9.8 is meaningless here. Because it is not adding any new information, any programmer knows g equal to 9.8 means g is 9.8. It should be something like gravitational constant. Secondly, it is not needed to put comment on each line. Usually what we do is, we write a comment for different blocks or sections of the code. For example, for a general program, taking different inputs from user, we can comment taking inputs before the input statements. Then if it is doing calculations on the inputs, we can comment like calculations. And finally before the results, we can have a comment like this. Other than logic explanation, Many times we use this commenting for debugging purpose. For example, here I have a code which involves some calculations. Maybe while debugging, I am interested to see the effect of removing this statement. So I can remove this statement, but I might need to add this back. So the better way is, that we change this to a comment by placing a hash sign. So this statement is no more part of our program and later if we need to include this, we can simply uncomment this. Likewise, we might need to remove a block of code for debugging purpose. For that, we can comment each line of a block of a code or else better approach is multi-line comment. For example, if I have to comment these three statements, instead of commenting each of those, I can put three single or double quotation marks before the code block and then again three quotation marks at the end of the block. So everything in between these three quotation marks is comment and will be ignored by the interpreter. These three quotation marks multi-line comments are generally used at the start of a program describing a little detail about the program or the project a programmer is working on. For example, something like this. Finally, there is a shortcut in Visual Studio Code to convert a statement or multiple statements into comment. For example, if I have to convert line number 3 into a comment, the cursor should be on that line or you can select the line and then press Ctrl key plus the forward slash key. It will convert that statement into comment by putting a hash sign at the start. If you want to uncomment it, press Ctrl and forward slash key one more time. And this is applicable for multi lines as well. For that, I should select the lines and then press Ctrl key plus forward slash key. All selected lines will get converted into comments. Pressing the same keys again will uncomment those. So that was all about comments in a program. And the third and the last thing to discuss in this lesson is about finding the data type of a variable. We know variables can be of different data types, for example int, float or strings and there are few others which we will study in detail in future lessons. Many times while debugging, we need to know the data type of a variable. In one of previous videos, we studied about a number as a number and a number as a string and we differentiated between those by observing the result of plus operator. If the numbers were added together, we said they were integers and if that resulted into joining of numbers, we said they are strings. But that is not a practical way of finding the data type of a variable. We have a built-in function named as type which we can use for this purpose. So let's define three variables of different data types. And now let's print the result of the type function and pass in the first variable a. See the output is class int. Don't worry about the class as that is something we will explore in next course of object oriented programming. Just focus on the word int 
which means variable A is of int data type. Now let's check the data type of B. And this time it is float as value of B is 2.5, which is a float value. For C, it is str, which stands for string. Not just that, let's try to print the data type of print function itself. Recall that we said print is a built in function. And it is printed as built in function or method. Similarly, input is also a built in function. So that's all from this lesson. See you in the next lesson.